From Classical 96.3 FM, that was Joshua Bell with the Spanish dance from Manuel de Falla's La Vida Breve. And it's 3.31, and I'd like to welcome my guest, Svetlana Dvoretskaya, who is the owner-proprietor brainchild behind mm-hmm. Show One Productions, which brings some of the most interesting artists to Toronto who normally would not be stopping off here. Thank you so much for dropping by. Well, thank you. Thank so, you very much, Alexa. We oh, try. Yeah, y- y- and you <laughs> succeed. We're going to talk about a few of the shows that you have coming up this spring. Bring. Let's yeah. start with uh, Maria Pajas Compania. Yeah, her absolutely. show Autoretrato, self portrait. You know what? It's especially very interesting for me to talk about this show right now because I just came back from from Spain. Uh, I spent a week in the small town called Jerez, which is a motherland of flamenco. That's where the flamenco was born. And Sherry. And and Sherry, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, don't forget Sherry. <laughs> Sherry, that we 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 had a lot of it. Yeah, they're known for their horses, Sherry and flamenco. And you know what? Over the week, I've watched over 20 performances. The whole world comes there. And over there, you really, really, truly realize how big this culture is, how rich this culture is, and how this culture just takes you in. It takes you in. It's becoming a drug. And the flamenco culture yeah, is becoming absolutely. Oh, really? Absolutely. You know what? Wow. You get so attached to it. Because everything they do, they do from from here. Like listeners can see solar what plexus. I'm like. She's it's touching from, her solar plexus. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all from there. You know, the, the singing, it's uh, the the lyrics. Unfortunately, I didn't understand most of it. <laughs> But when when you are, when when you know what the words are and the dance, it's it's just extraordinary. And I have to say that I'm very happy that this year, because Toronto was kind of um, lacking uh, good flamenco shows that were coming to 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 our city, unlike to Montreal or yeah. or even Ottawa for that matter. But thanks to the Toronto International Flamenco Festival that's going for like six years already, they're kind of doing a lot of things to promote this culture. And this year has been actually really not bad. We've had quite a few. We had Rafaela Carrasco, which was fantastic, is very, very big performer. Uh, she was here in October. And then we had Noche Flamenco and Paco Pena. And yeah. now Maria Paz. And Maria is a really, really, really huge name in, 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 in the world of flamenco. A really huge name. And besides being... Um, very famous, very um, uh, very renowned dancer, um, like herself, because she also actually she was a leading dancer in uh, river dance for <laughs> for some years, which is which is interesting. But the yeah. footwork, you know, it's um, I guess it's intricate some, footwork in yeah, both. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, and uh, she's very famous, and she's also. Um, big innovator and uh, she implements a lot of different more contemporary things into that very very old culture and very old art of flamenco Um, so the show that her and her company brings to Toronto it's called Atto Retrato which translates as a self-portrait which is self-reflection and what I really wanted to mention is this show it was inspired and uh, the whole idea about the show came from the one of the greatest dancers of our time is Michael Barishnikov. How so? Very good friends. Ah. Uh, she was invited. Uh, he he has a Barishnikov Center in, in New York, right? Barishnikov Art Center. And they commission a lot of interesting works. So he invited her to uh, create the work. And that was created specifically for Barishnikov Art Center. And she considered this this project actually the the opening of of her as a human being as mm. a, as a dancer, and mm. um, uh, this will be very very interesting visually because she uses a lot of uh, a lot of different elements. I don't want to give ev- a lot of things away, you know. But hopefully people will come and see it. But besides the traditional flamenco, there is all kinds of interesting contemporary things that people will enjoy. It's a feedback on it. One, one, one guy commented, neither the sky nor the earth is the same after Maria Pares has danced. Isn't it wonderful? The show is Saturday, I'm... March 30th at 8 p.m. at the Sony Center. Get your tickets at sonycenter.ca. Get more information at showoneproductions.ca. Now, let's. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, yep. so let's talk about the Eifman Ballet from St. Petersburg and their show Rodin, which you're bringing in May. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for pronouncing his last name <laughs> correctly. Yes, it's actually... It's 
it's yeah, it's eighth month. Okay, uh, the St. Petersburg State Ballet uh, of Boris Eifman. He founded 30 years ago. It's the first time they're coming to Toronto. They're wow. touring all over the world. They're very, very, very well known, famous. They're going to be in Toronto this May. This is the latest production, the famous love story of the French sculptor and, and his uh, his uh, student and mistress, Camille Claudel. Yeah. When we think of Rodin, uh, we think of Bijard. Okay. We think of Lepage. Okay. Uh, so those kind of chore- like choreography and those kind of visual effects and those kind of ideas and philosophies, uh, they're shared by Boris Eifman, who's been called one of the greatest choreographers of 21st century in New York. Um, when New York Times did the review of like his latest work, that's what they said. Like if if wow. the world is searching for the best choreographer, they said actually the best, but <laughs> I'm I'm a little too modest for that. They said that that's <laughs> Eifman. So this is absolutely spectacular, uh, spectacular performance. Just because it will satisfy the taste of the classical ballet lovers, because the level of um, of, uh, of the work is uh, and, and and the level of the dancers is extraordinary. It will satisfy the people who like visual effects because they are so much there, and it will satisfy people who just love music because it's based on the music of Sansons and Masne, and everyone who's got a heart who <laughs> cares about love. And <laughs> and uh, just wanted to see something absolutely spectacular. It will happen at the Sony Center. And Newsday commented on that one. Mm-hmm. Eifman is the real deal, a choreographer magician who can shape the most unlikely material into throat-catching, mind-blowing stage images. And it's true. It doesn't get much better than <laughs> it that. It doesn't get much better, but it is so true. We have a trailer from uh, from this performance on our website, showonproductions.ca. I invite everyone to have a pick at that trailer. And if you don't have shivers and if your heart is not moving, please let us know because... <laughs> <laughs> That's just not possible. It, it's it's a really, really moving performance. And the Eiffelman Ballet presents Rodin at the Sony Center on May 23rd to 25th at 7.30 p.m. Again, you can get tickets at sonycenter.ca and you can get more information at showoneproductions.ca. Svetlana Dvoraskaya, thank you so much for thank dropping you. by. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Now, here's some music that you may hear when you go to Rodin. <laughs> 